Perfect. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. So we're going to do the joy plate. So you will have seen um, some photos of it. I've got two cameras running. So if Pip can pop me on that one, perfect. Then you guys can see. So this is one um, kind of example of the joy plate. So what we've got is the wreath going around the edge. The other one is this one. So where we've kind of double layered it. So if you wanted to make it um, a little bit kind of more full, get some more decoration in there, then you're very, very welcome to. So um, a lot of it will come along to artist choice. These are really easy to do. So obviously I'll chat you through each stage as the evening goes on, but um, doing these little leaves and stuff, they're actually quite easy to do, but also quite addictive. So once you get going, you may find you want to do a double layer like this, but if not, then we've got this one here. And what I'll do is I'm painting along with you. Um, Pip is there as well. She will keep an eye on everybody. Um, just make sure that you're all doing okay. Um, make sure that everyone's kind of keeping up and hasn't got any problems. But if you do have any worries, oh, here's Pip's. Hers is um, pre-fired. So that's the kind of thing that you'll be looking at um, when you've finished your project this evening. So Pip actually took hers in as a really tight wreath, a circular wreath around the word joy. So again, another option. Um, it's entirely up to you which one you guys go for. Are you able to put me back on the overhead? Yeah. Please. Thanks. Okay, so as I say, I'm going to paint along with you, but Pip is there. If you've got any worries at all and I'm busy talking over you, um, there is a little chat button at the bottom of the screen. You're very welcome to pop a question in there. Um, Pip will then answer it or stop me um, and then we can kind of tell everybody all together because normally um, if there is a question, it's often not just one of you that needs to know. So just to quickly run over exactly what we're doing and then we'll do it in stages. We have, obviously you've got your plate in your kit. You should have um, a little sponge and two different size brushes. You should have a fan brush and a nice thin um, pointy brush. And then you should have a little pot that has a sticker on the top. I've got a ladybird. Most of you will have a dot and I think Rachel's got a leaf. Um, I started changing stickers halfway through packing them. So that is wax resist. Now that is not something you want to accidentally paint on your plate. So um, I would at the moment just put your wax resist to the side so you don't get tempted to paint with that accidentally. You've then got two bottles like this. You've got a lighter grey and a darker grey. You have one, two, three, four, five little pots like this. We have um, red. You should have a little bit of red in there. We've got brown. And then we've got a teal colour and then two different greens. There's kind of a, a sage green and then a, a nice vibrant green. And then one more pot, which is the white glaze that we're going to use. So hopefully you've all got the same as me. Oh, and your template. So you've got your paper template of the word that you're going to do. I did have um, a question from one of you when you picked up, if you could do a different word, you're very, very welcome to do a different word in the middle. So if you want to, um, when we're transferring that, because I've already got a joy plate, I'm actually going to put Mary on my next one. So I printed it off already. But um, when you're transferring the word into the middle, by all means, you can pick um, any word you'd like on there. OK, so just to run through the stages. But as, as I say, we'll go through it together. You're going to paint white glaze onto the front of your plate. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we're adding wax resist. And wax resist does exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to resist any glaze that goes on over the top of it. So um, it's a wax based. The only way we get this off of the pottery is by firing it away. So if you accidentally dribble a bit, it's going to be part of your design. So just be really aware when you're using that wax resist that it doesn't get kind of dropped or, or put in the wrong place. But because of that, if we put it straight onto bisque, we then fire it, the word in the middle would then still be bisque. It wouldn't have that nice clear glaze over the top, therefore it wouldn't be food safe. So we're going to put down a white base coat and then we'll add the wax resist over the top. Then we'll trace on our, our pattern and our design. And then we're going to do some sponging and then we'll start doing some painting. Now the idea with these little leaves and, and wreath kind of berries and twigs, it's all done as a brush stroke technique. So normally we talk about three coats of glaze, we want nice, solid, bright colours. These are actually done as a brush stroke. So if I can get the plate close enough, hopefully you'll be able to see. There's kind of two tone there. We've got some different te like textures coming through. They're really, really nice and simple, thin, delicate brush strokes that give you this lovely effect. We don't have to do three coats. The only bit that's really, really solid is the berries that go on um, at the end. So I will chat you through how we get that effect with our paintbrush later on. 
but the first thing we're going to do is coat the front of our plate with white glaze. Now, what I did this evening is I've actually bought through one of my own dinner plates because I'm going to suggest everyone has a plate to work from purely because we're going to be sponging with some of our glazes, so we're going to need to tip them out. And also adding water um, to a glaze is easier to do if it's on some form of palette. So if you want to quickly grab yourselves a plate um, or something similar that you can use, then by all means, just do that. And I will hang fire until everyone's back in the room. Perfect. So we're going to start with a fan brush. Now the idea with a fan brush is that you can get a lot of glaze onto a piece in kind of a nice even coverage. So um, you should be able to use these beautifully with this by kind of base coating really, really quickly and simply. The idea is you fully load your brush. So we're going to open our FN001, which is a white foundation glaze. And just with your water, wet your brush and then pop a brush full of water into that glaze pot and just spend a bit of time just mixing it up there. We only need to do this the once, it's just getting the glaze ready to go onto the pottery. And then we're going to fully load our brush. Now it's really tempting when you're painting to wipe your brush like this and get all of that excess off because we're not used to painting with, um, with glaze or paint that wants to drip off of the brush. However, we want these fully loaded, so you want it just at the point where it's not dripping anymore. And then you're going to go for lovely long brush strokes. So nice long brush strokes backwards and forwards. You'll find that as soon as it starts to drag, you need to reload it again. The idea is that you get this lovely even finish on here. Now don't worry if you've missed sections. So looking at mine, I've missed a few bits up here. It's looking a little bit thinner in the middle. We're going to do two coats of this. So you'll catch up and that will cover that in the second coat. And then you just pop it on and then let that dry. So as soon as it's dry, it will have lost its shine. So it shouldn't take too long. Probably you've all got your central heating on, so it's really, really warm, but also the bisque is really porous, so it's going to pull in all of that moisture really quickly. Now it really is like washing paint dry. It really is. Yeah, this bit is. Um, once we've got to the um, delicate brush strokey bit, everyone will just be painting and doing their own thing. But this bit is a little bit like, do a bit, stop and wait, do a bit, stop and wait. But we'll all get there in a bit. Christina, if you didn't want to put any word in the middle, could you just do a pattern or something? Or Definitely, yeah. Yeah, anything you want to do is absolutely fine. So that's the back wax for this bit, is it? Yes. So if you didn't put anything in the middle, you wouldn't be using that technique? No, so you wouldn't be adding anything, but you could do a design that's then done in wax resist so it would be white. So you've then got that kind of white central kind of focal point of the plate. Um, alternatively, you can have that kind of grey background and just bring in your, like your kind of wreath design a little bit more. Um, but I think just having that central bit that's white really stands out. So it might be worth thinking about something that goes in there that you can use the wax resist for. Do the little white um, specks around the word joy, are they in wax resist, Christina? They're not. They are in white glaze. So actually, once we finish doing everything, we're going to flick white glaze all over our plate. Okay. Um, so we get a bit messy right at the end. But yeah, that's actually white um, glaze that goes over the top. I like that. Yeah. Christina, do we need a pencil? Um, or a pen. You just need something so you'll be able to push through in a bit. If you're drawing your own design in the middle, draw it in pen, not pencil. Unless the pencil's on the paper. <laughs> yeah, ballpoint pen. OK, 
Okay, so my second coat's just gone on um, and now I'm just going to let that dry completely and just wash out my fan brush because we don't need that again for a little while. Okay, my plate has dried, so we're ready for the next stage, but don't worry if yours hasn't. Um, the idea is now we are going to emboss our word in the middle. So don't worry too much about the edge just yet. Um, if you are going to go all the way out with your design. So this one here, we've got the grey coming in in the background, whereas this plate here, the grey stayed within the centre. So just have a little think on your background, but I would recommend we're just going to work um, on the word in the middle at the moment. Now, obviously you guys will be working off of this one, but I'm just going, I've taken Mary down a bit smaller, um, just so that I can try and position it centrally. But the idea is you're just going to lay it on wherever you want the word to be, hold it in place, and then with your pen, just draw around the edge of your letters. Now, mine are going to be slightly narrower, but obviously with the joy word, you're just going to follow every single line so you make a proper bubbled letter. And then we're going to paint that in in a moment. So once your plate is dry completely, you need to get onto this stage. The reason why we wait for it to dry completely is it's setting up against the bisque. So if you started to rush it and go too quick, when you lift your paper up, you're going to pull all of that glaze that you've put on there back off again. So it's worth just waiting for that shine to go completely. Now, when you're tracing it on, you don't need to press too hard, but firmly enough, just so you can see where it's gone. Now, if you need to check, keep your fingers on the paper, lift it up and you should just see the slight patterning on there. Oh, check down my letter really quickly I'll be able to show you the kind of thing that we're working on but you may well have started by then but the idea is you should just be able to see something on your plate when you lift the paper when you lift your paper off Okay, so I've transferred mine and that's, I don't know if you can see it in this light, that's the kind of thing that you're aiming for, just so you've got something to follow along with your wax when you start painting that, okay? Now you guys all getting on. I think most of you have copied, perfect. So with your finer brush, um, it's got, it should have a little plastic cap on. These are brand new. So you're just going to spend a bit of time just um, loosening up the bristles. They come kind of quite tightly packed in there. And then with your wax resist, really carefully, you're going to paint on your word. So just take the lid off, dip your brush into the wax resist, and then I'll show you on mine. Obviously my letters are a little bit thinner, but if you are going to go, actually let's do it like this. If you're going for a thicker bit on your letter, you can go side on like that with your paintbrush and pull it along and you'll get this lovely thicker line. If you're wanting nice, thin, fine points, work at 90 degrees to the piece and then just go along with the tip of your paintbrush and you'll get really, really lovely thin lines there. So just have a bit of a play. If you're worried about doing the edging, just start right in the middle of your letter and get used to the way your paintbrush is going to move. And the idea is you're just going to do one good coat of wax over your word. Now, if you find that um, a letter's gone a bit wibbly or there's a bit that's not supposed to be where it is, make it part of your design because this is the part where once it's on, it's staying on. Um, you can't also put wax over the top of wax. So once it's dried, that's where it is because obviously it will start resisting itself as well. So um, you're just going to now do one coat of wax over the top of your word.
if you decide that you want to block out anything more than just your um, word or design in the middle, now is the time to add more wax to other areas. So um, if you were wanting, so Amanda asked earlier about the little white speckles, if you didn't want to do those with paint at the end and you want them to be kind of a brighter white, you could um, add some little tiny dots all over it now. Um, or if you wanted to add extra bits, then you can do now. Now is the time to do it because this is all we're doing the wax for is this word in the middle. Um, because we need to use this paintbrush again as well. Once you're finished, you just need to leave your plate to dry, but we're going to um, go and wash out your paintbrush. So you need to wash it this time with either hand soap or washing, <laughs> washing up liquid. <laughs> I've just looked up and Pip's got something ridiculous on her head. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> we need to use um, washing up liquid or hand soap this <laughs> or water um, and clean out your brush. Don't just wash it in the water that you're using for your um, for your glazing because obviously the wax droplets will be in there as well and they're going to cause carnage um, as we move further on through the project. So I'm just going to up and leave quickly and wash this at the sink and then I'll be back with you guys. I'll have you know, Christina, it's not ridiculous. I am a snowman. Is that what you are? <laughs> <laughs> Can you put too much of this wax resist stuff on or not? Not really, no. It does need to dry before you do the next bit, but no, you can't really. Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for the wax resist to dry, we're going to get ready to do the sponging of the background now. So we're going to kind of work in reverse. Um, normally we say to do all of your lovely light colours first and then work through to your darker colours. Most of the greens that we're putting on are darker than um, the greys, but we've actually got two greys in there. So you get this kind of nice blended finish on the way out here. Now, this one is Laura's one that she did. The idea is the darker grey comes in closer to the middle, so it surrounds whatever you've put in there, either your word or your holly or whatever you guys have decided to do. So we're going to start with the light grey. Now, obviously, darker over light works anyway, so you're just going to start by really gently sponging from your word out around your plate. Now, you can go all the way to the rim. Um, I think this one is harder for you to see, but there is some very light grey sponging here, so there is no white really left on the edge of mine. Um, so I took it all the way out. You just want to make sure that your darker bit is in the middle. Now, as you can see with Laura's, um, she kept hers quite solid. So she's got the, the dark grey ring and then this lighter grey around the edge. If you spend a bit of time um, with your sponge and blending your colours, you can put the light back over the dark if you want to, so that it's more of a kind of smooth blend coming out there. So this bit sort of goes over to you guys with artist choice in the sense that it's up to you how far out you want to take your grey. Now you'll notice that the wax should start doing what it's supposed to do which is resisting that glaze over the top so when you're sponging it will either form into little droplets on top of your letters or it will just push it away to the side. Now once you've finished doing all of your sponging I would recommend that just with a wet paintbrush so just a little bit of water on the thin paintbrush that you've cleaned you're just going to go over your letters a little bit just to push any glaze off of those letters there. If any is left on, just to show you on this one, you're going to get this, oh, I made the camera move, sorry. You're gonna get this kind of finish coming in here. So there will be discoloration on your letters. So we will just spend a bit of time cleaning them up afterwards. But the idea is you want to sponge over the top of your word so that your color in the background gets in between um, all of the little spacing on your letters. Now this is where your other plates are going to come in handy. Um, starting with your lighter grey, um, they're a little bit like a child lock cap, so push down 
before you untwist. And then you're just going to squeeze some of the colour out. And then with your sponge, you can use this flat edge, but you will then get that shape. So I tend to use um, a section just kind of in a bit from where it's been cut. But just load your sponge up and then dab your excess off. And then just very gently start dabbing the colour onto your plate. And then, as I say, this is where you'll then work your way out and you'll get the finish that you want to do. So you can either have it looking really spongy like that or you can add your layers so it becomes thicker. But just make sure that your wax is completely dry before you start this. It always has a sheen to it, but you can see the difference between wet wax sheen versus a drier set up wax sheen. So just wait for that to do, to do its thing and then you can start your sponging. Now really with sponging, you only need to do one layer. So if ever you were doing a different project and you wanted that spongy textured background, you only have to do one layer of glaze. But obviously with this, you're just going to build it up for the effect that you're wanting it to be. So um, you can't really go wrong, to be fair. Is your sponge dry? It is, yes. It's completely dry. So I just went straight into the glaze and then um, onto the plate. So it's the light one. It's the light one. So did you say that you can move this um, grey paint off of the wax at a later, you know, when you've done it all? Just yes, wet yes. So I, you can do it in between coats, but I found it's just really time consuming and it doesn't give you any benefit at all. So because we'll move through the next stages relatively quickly, um, you can just leave it on there for this first bit and then we'll clean them off before we move on to transferring our, our reeds around the edge. A therapeutic this. It really is. This is where I very rarely do one coat because I really like sponging glaze. So this light grey is number 60, so it's our really, really pale grey. So um, you'll, obviously you don't get the full effect now with it, but it is a really, really subtle grey. So if you did take it all the way to the edge, um, it's not going to make your plate really, really dark. So don't, don't be kind of fearful of this one. You don't have to take it all the way to the edge. You can leave some of that white edge coming in. Um, but yeah, don't feel like you're going to get a really dark plate if you do take it all the way up. How do I know if my wax resist is dry? Can I touch it or is that gonna? Don't touch it, just don't smear across it, but just kind of <laughs> touch it with your finger. Um, yeah. I'm really tempted when I'm checking stuff is to kind of wipe across something. But yeah, if you just kind of gently tap it with your finger, it will be really tacky if it's not quite set up yet. Yeah, it's still a bit tacky. So do I now need to wash my hand? I would, yeah, just in case <laughs> that all over it. So I've got my base coat of my grey on. So I'm going to go with my darker grey now and I'm going to work from the middle out. Now, if you make a mistake or you find it goes on a bit thicker or it's where you didn't really want it to be, you can come back in with your light grey um, kind of over the top so you blend it a bit more. So now's the time, um, once you start adding your dark grey, you can, um, you know, kind of start blending and, and get a feel for how it's going to look once it's fired. And less is more when you're sponging. So get rid of loads of your excess on your plate, on your um, kind of glaze plate as such, before you go on to your pottery. And then you won't end up with really big, thick blobs of glaze. You're just going to have this really nice kind of delicate sponged finish as you're working your way around. But 
but to really make your word pop in the middle, you want to make sure your dark grey is pretty solid over your word just to make sure it really, really stands out. I think I'm going to leave mine like that, but just to show you guys, because you'll move on to this bit quite quickly, where it's all pulled onto my letters, I'm just going to get a little bit of water onto my brush, but I have wiped the edge of it on the, um, on the edge of my water bowl. And I don't know if you can see it clearly enough there, but I'm literally just wiping backwards and forwards on that letter. And what it's doing is rehydrating the sponged gray glaze and it's pushing it off of the letter there. So it's making it nice and clean. So you'll just spend a bit of time working your way around your word or your image. And you're just going to, as I say, rehydrate the grey that is trying to dry on the top of that wax and it will just push it back off the edge and just clean that wax up there.
Okay, so I've cleaned up my word and then my sponging um, is drying nicely over the top. So hopefully in a little bit, you guys will get to that point as well. So those of you that have done your cleaning up and you've done all of your sponging, now is the time to start getting your wreath added in around the edge. Now, the one that I've given you, um, this we did this at Pottery Camp, and so it was designed originally to go on a round plate. Um, however, Pottery Camp sent us with these ones, and actually we quite like this um, uh, oval snack plate. It's a really, really lovely plate to use. It's one of kind of mine and Pip's favourites, actually. Okay. So we have um, basically just tweaked the design to go in there. So you will miss some of your design coming in around the edge. But what you're going to do is just lay your image down like you did when you copied your word and you're just going to draw your bits. So kind of moving your paper around, bearing in mind um, that you've got some of these pieces are coming in and they're looking upside down. So make sure you've got those kind of coming in the wrong way as such. And then it's a bit of a free for all now. It's over to you as to what, how much you add, where you want it to go, what it's going to look like. And again, you can't go wrong. This is just tracing that on now. I don't know if you're able to see here, but where I've traced this holly here, um, it's actually lifted the grey off. Now, if I decided I didn't want holly there anymore, oh. I would need to sponge back over that bit. Otherwise, it will always look like holly was scratched into the plate. So that's the only thing if you decided to change your mind as you were working your way around. But the idea is you're just going to kind of work at just getting that to just show through by indenting it into your piece so you know where you're going. And actually you'll probably find that once you start, you can then freehand some extra bits in. So like things like the twigs and things are really, really easy just to freehand in place. But for me, I like to get the shape of the bigger branches and the holly and things on there. And then I can kind of ad lib as I go. So that's the next stage you're going to get to. So once everybody's done that bit, we will then um, all start the next section together. There we go. So. When you look at it, you just get this kind of looking like it's green, but each section is slightly different. So you've got these two tones coming in here. You've actually got two tones coming in on this one. Um, probably your most simple are your sticks as such, like your, your little twiggy bits. Um, you've even got two tones coming in on your holly. So I'll chat you through each one, but then you can kind of pick and choose where you're putting them. Um, I think this one here, I just did as one color. Um, but this one's got two tones and so as you get going you'll be able to add more as you go but just to let you know how we're going to do it so I would recommend opening your pots of glaze and then with your clean paintbrush just scoop a bit of glaze out so we're just going to go for like a, a clump like that I'm just going to pop that on the plate then I'm going to wash my brush out just so it's not all over the bristles and then with a full paintbrush of water I'm just going to mix that in there so then I kind of have a slightly more watered down version of the glaze and what will happen when you do that is when you then touch that paintbrush down you're going to get um, something I guess the best way to describe it is like a droplet of glaze that you'll then be able to pull along and that's how you get these lovely kind of wispy finishes on it so I'm just going to start with one of my twigs now the rest of this is dry so I can rest my hand on it but this is now my paintbrush loaded with the watered glaze. And then I'm just going to work at 90 degrees. And just gently touch the tip down and then pull that droplet along. And then as you end it and kind of come off, you'll get that nice, nice point there. And then coming on up with your twig design, we're then going to get that on. Now the idea is that you get this lovely brush stroke finish so you don't then have to go over that again and again and again that's kind of it done if you wanted it to be darker and you wanted it to stand out you can just add a little bit more and once that's dry you can kind of add a bit more depth to it you can shade in a little bit over the top but you're just going to work your way around the plate now when it comes to doing the leaves that are two-tone you're actually going to do a little bit of color mixing now, not in the sense that you're going to mix them all and it will just become brown, but you're going to get two colours on your paintbrush at the same time. So what I'm doing here, I've got the um, kind of brighter, vibrant green, and then I've got the bluey colour. Remember, your wax resist looks very similar, so move that well out of the way. So with my paintbrush with a bit of water, I'm just going to do what we call fully load with this bright green. And then with that paintbrush, I'm just going to touch it in to the bluey green on the end 
And then when I've done that, wherever your leaves are that you're wanting to add those, you're just going to touch down, spread your bristles out, and then lift your bristles up as you come to the end of your leaf, and then you'll get that nice point there. And then when that dries, you've then got that two-tone effect coming in. Now that's not quite gone to the end of my leaf where I wanted it to go. And you may find if you've added a bit too much water, you can add a little bit more glaze and then bring that through to the end there. And that's how you would get your two-tone leaf. Now you wouldn't do that more than once because if you keep going over that, you're going to lose that effect where you've got the two colors kind of coming in together. But have a play with it. I actually think I've added too much water to my um, vibrant green. So I'm just gonna get some more of the, the kind of basic glaze out and add that back in. Um, purely because it was a bit too runny when I started and then I'll reload and the idea is that you can push down on it so you get the fatter part of your leaf and then as you pull along and come up it'll then go into a nice fine point at the end. So when you're touching the brush down yeah that's at the point where the leaf is meeting the branch and you're pulling away yes. towards the leaf tip. Yeah yeah and then my plan is just with neat green, so I'm going to rinse my brush off again. I'm gonna go straight into this pot that doesn't have any water in, and then going to do my central bit of that branch. I'm just gonna bring it all the way up with my kind of solid green, so this isn't watered down. And then you can kind of join it on up there. So yes, where that leaf is touching, it's coming off that branch there. And then I'm gonna work my way around. Now with the holly leaves, I did it with the, um, the vibrant green, I did my outline, and then I went in with this green, which is the, um, it's like a sage colour, so actually it comes out quite a bit darker than the way it looks today. Um, I then did the kind of watered down version on the inside of the holly leaf, and then with this brighter green again, I just did a little bit of accenting down the middle, so you've got this kind of um, lines and things coming in on your leaves. So it's just a matter now of having a bit of a play. By all means as well, when you're doing these, you can bring in some of the brown. So if you're doing this one here and you wanted two tones instead of just one colour, you can bring in some brown on there so you get some more depth on those leaves. But it's just a matter now of kind of working your way around and having a bit of a play. I kept my fern bits like this, just one colour, but I was looking at Laura's plates and actually she's come in with two there. So it looks more like a branch off of a fir tree perhaps. So she's done her brown and then she went back over the top of it with a green, so she's added that extra colour coming in there. Okay, so then that's the kind of thing you're going to aim for, just slowly working your way around. And you'll see when it's then fired, you'll get this pooling of colour because you've watered it down, but you then get the different depth on each one of the leaves. And then you'll just work your way around. If you find it's all getting a bit mucky on your paintbrush and you've kind of mixed your colours too many times, just wash your brush out and then start reloading it again. And then you'll find that you do get that definition coming through. Um, the teal colour that I've put in looks really blue today. It will go softer when it's fired. So don't panic too much if you end up putting lots of that on your plate. It won't look as blue when it's done. We'll add the berries right at the end. So don't worry too much about those. Does it all make sense to everybody? Yeah. Perfect. Just got to execute it now. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. <laughs> if you want to, have a little practice with that technique on your piece of paper before you go straight onto your plate. Um, or just be brave and go straight onto your plate. You can always kind of work it a little bit more um, to get it to go exactly where you wanted it to be with the glaze on there. It's a blessing of having it slightly watered down. There is a little bit more kind of fluidity to it. There's a bit more movement bit more forgiving. When you outline in a solid colour, when you then add the watered down kind of middle, so thinking about the holly leaves, um, when you add your other colour in the middle, you can then sort of soften the edges of these kind of harsh lines with the watered down brush. So get those on and let them dry. Then do your colour, your other colour inside with the water and you'll be able to soften them down just by rehydrating them and moving them about a little bit.
How are you all getting on with your leaves and patterns? So obviously when you're at a point where you want to stop, bear in mind that you have got the red berries that come in and those really make this pop. They kind of bring it all up together. But what we're going to do first is flick white. Now, all of our glazes are washable and non-toxic. So if this ends up going in your mouth, in your face, all on your clothes, it's all gonna come off. So it will be fine and it's very, very safe. But the idea is going back to your foundations white, and um, your thin paintbrush that you were just using. I would just get a little bit of that foundations white out, add a tiny bit of water to it just to make it come off your paintbrush a bit easier. And then the idea is you're just going to flick. So you'll, you'll tap your finger on the top of your paintbrush, aiming down and you'll end up getting these flicky droplets coming off. Now, this is the kind of thing you're going to aim for. So it'll just be blob of white coming off and landing all over your piece. Now, if you find that they go long, like these bits were here, they get this kind of longer splatter coming across. Um, if they're all doing that, turn your plate a little bit so they go in a different direction, um, just to make it look a little bit more natural. Yeah, we do the berries. Then we're going to do the berries right at the end. <laughs> so you want your berries to stand out, I think, really, really well. So the last thing you want is to accidentally blob white on the top of where your berries are going to go. So once your white is done and your flicking is done, just give your paintbrush a wash one more time and wring it out. Now for the berries, we're going to use the handle of our paintbrush. Now um, we want the berries to be pretty solid. They're going to be our kind of most solid thing that's on this plate. So with the handle of your paintbrush, you're just going to dip it in your red. This is a really, really bright, vibrant red. It doesn't look it in the pot, but it will be when it's fired. And then wherever you want these to go, you're just going to dot them down. Now, obviously, one dot of your handle gives you um, a, a particular size. But if you want your berries to be a little bit bigger, just touch it down and then move it round ever so slightly. And you'll still get that blob, but you can control the size of it a little bit more. Obviously, if you're wanting smaller, either touch really lightly or tap on your paper a few times before you go onto your plate. So you will find the more you tap with a paintbrush with glaze on the end, the smaller your berries will get. So you can always tap twice and then do the third tap on your plate if you're wanting really small ones. Um, that's quite beneficial for things like your little branches and stuff like that. This will change a lot when it's fired. The colours will really, really stand out. It looks quite pale at the moment. What do you think of my plate? Looks very good, well done. I was listening, but I've forgotten. What am I doing with the white splatter it? <laughs> you're just going to, um, if you want to put some on your palette plate, then you're very welcome to. If not, just straight in the pot. And then you're just going to load it and then flick it with your finger like that. And it will kind of just splat all over the plate. Cool. And then once you've done that, add your red berries.
And then once your berries are on, that is your plate complete. So as I say, they will get dip glazed, so the back will be nice and shiny. Now you still have plenty of glaze left. So if you wanted to do some more gray sponging on the back, you can do. If you want to add, you know, perhaps a little bit of holly on the back, anything that you want to do, because bearing in mind the back of your plate is a big expanse of white. So if you're wanting to add some more in your own time, then you can do. There is plenty of glaze on there. Um, if you're using wax resist on the back, just make sure you put some of that foundation white down first. Um, but if you're just gonna go with this kind of leaf technique, then by all means you can take it around the back as well. These are quite shallow plates, but they're quite nice if they've got something on this, um, this edge here, just to kind of show off once they're um, being moved around. So it's entirely up to you. Do let that dry properly now. Those white splatters and the berries are very, very wet. So you're going to want to just, if you can, sit and leave it out overnight. Um, and then tomorrow, if you're completely finished, you just rewrap it in your tissue paper um, and pop it to the studio during our opening times. Um, if you want to add some more to it, then you can do just make sure it's completely dry before you go wrapping them up again. Your little pots of glaze will last a couple of weeks in these pots, um, but not um, indefinitely. Unfortunately, the wax resist we found out recently after about five weeks goes solid, a bit like Vaseline, and it's then not usable. Um, so that won't last for very long. But these pots, um, unfortunately, are all plastic, but they are recyclable. So they will go in your recycling bin um, if you just rinse them out underwater. Okay, yeah, you guys can see them. There we go.